Joining us for this conversation now is a director at the Women's Legal Center, Siham Samai. Ms. Samai, thank you very much for your time. I, I don't know how to even preface my first question here, but the attention is on advocate Kolega Kalega, whom Glynis Breitenbach suggested that she essentially slept her way to the top. It's even difficult for me to utter those words. How do you think those words landed to the women of this country? Well, it's quite very sad. I mean, we do know that, um, uh, you know, Breitenbach was actually out of line, and we need to be able to call all the behavior out. We know that um, she was playing the person and not she if she wanted to indicate that a colleague was in you know she was not a fit, fit and proper person etc she should have stuck to focusing a position that she wasn't skilled enough but she went to a very old unacceptable misogynistic um uh, 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 adage that is women sleep themselves you know to the top and i think it's unacceptable because um, uh, Kolika has, at the end of the day, you know, she's a black woman. She has gone through the NPA. She has, she is a, a, a attorney for many, many years, or advocate for many years. And we need to be able to respect that. If the DA wanted to bring these issues out, that is where we had the parliamentary interviews. None of these issues was placed before her. And I would say that it is an ambush. All right. To be able to stereotypically attack people, and you have the opportunity to raise it during the interview. Does... All right. Ms. Samai, I think we have a, a problem with uh, the connection to you. I'm going to try and see if we can try and fix that in the meantime. And while we try to do that, if it means that we're going to have to get Ms. Samai on the telephone line, so be it. But uh, let's just have a listen to what the ACDP, uh, one of the parties represented in Parliament, which voted against Galega's uh, endorsement by Parliament, the party's chief whip, uh, Steve Swart, saying they were not happy, though, with the Palapala report. Well, with the previous impeachment process with Advocate M. Kobani, we voted in favor of her appointment, and we live to regret that, following the impeachment and following the court judgments against her. So we approached this appointment with great circumspect. We, as the ACDP, were concerned with the public protector's finding on the Palapala Commission, the Palapala incident, where she found that President Ramaphosa, there was no wrongdoing on his side, and in our view, that flew directly in the face of the independent panel, which was chaired by a former Chief Justice, which said that the President, there was prima facie evidence that the President had committed misconduct, serious breaches of the Constitution. And so that immediately raised red flags about the independence of Advocate Galeka, although she came across very well and she has been acting for two years, but we had our reservations and because all right, let's go back to CM uh, Samai, and hopefully the connection is a bit better to you. I just want to quote directly the words that were used by Glynis Breitenbach, and I quote now. This is now talking about Kolega Kalega. She says, and I quote, her very cozy relationship, some say intimate relationship with her boss. My words, the words that I want to pick on there is the suggestion from her that she doesn't bring here, she doesn't bring something that is of credible evidence. She says, some say, it's not even her own wording, okay? So, this is not a critique 
on the work of Kolega Tzalega. This is attacking Tzalega and her yes. person. How or what should be done from here yes. on? Should people like you and ordinary women in South Africa demand an apology from Clinton Breitenbach? Yes. Well, I don't know whether or not you've heard me earlier, but I said that... Uh, um, Sadly, I mean, even though Breitenbach is a good lawyer and she, you know, the issue here is that she played the person and not, um, uh, you know, uh, not the game. And the issue here is that uh, she should have stuck on focusing on the, the whether or not um, the, the public protector is skilled enough to do the job, um, to accuse her or even insinuating that she's sleeping away to the top is... It's an old stereotypical action that is actually taken mostly by men, and now uh, Breitenbach and the DA, and it's old and it's lazy. It's lazy work, and she shouldn't have been. For example, you know, women face um, these type of stereotypical allegations especially in the legal profession, and it undermines our abilities uh, by resorting to what men accuse women of. And so at the end of the day, we need to be able to understand what the gender imperatives are, not just in our society, but also within the legal profession. Yeah. The public protector is an institution that we should protect, and Parliament has indicated that colleague uh, you know, recommended that she is the public protector. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And as the DA and through Breitenbach even considered that they have to work with the public protector to be able to ensure that our development state um, reaches it, its constitutional imperatives yeah. through accountability, through transparency. Did they think that throwing such a statement is appropriate in our constitutional dispensation, it's not. And I hope that both Breitenbach and the DA will seriously reflect in terms of what they have done. Well, um, she was... Because it, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes. She, she was asked by the Speaker to withdraw the comments, and yes. she flat out said, no, I will not do that, and she chose to walk out of Parliament. In fact, she was told to leave Parliament. So, here, here's what, what I'm going to ask of you, therefore. Politicians in Parliament can argue parliamentary privilege for the things they say inside the chamber. So, in simple language, she will say that she is protected by the privileges that come with her making that statement inside Parliament. Is there something that can be done to well, make I mean, her yeah. to either apologize or would you even encourage Kolega Tzalega to take action against Breitenbach? Well, I don't think that uh, uh, Kolega will be able to do what she needs to in terms of the law if she wants to uh, direct it, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I think that Parliament and the Speaker, well, even the other political parties, and I hope they will be able to hold the integrity of the space of Parliament, that never should we be um, ensure that there's gender discrimination, never should we push gender stereotyping. And it's quite sad that it's a woman with the integrity of uh, a Breitenbach, who just recently, I mean, she, she understands the law, she supports progressive um, uh, 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 agenda, uh, uh, submissions, etc. And I would really want to reflect, because as a woman, I would say that how does she, without any evidence, without any evidence, um, um, on um, Koleka, it's not acceptable. And the arrogance, and I would say it borders on misogyny, and we need to be able to keep the DA accountable for this type of behavior. Um, it, it, it is it, because at the end of the day, why was these questions not asked during the interview process? Because it would never have stood the ground. Mm. And I think to use Parliament 
for these type of um, stabbings and um, I would say political point scoring is not acceptable. The public protector is an institution of the constitution and we need to be able to protect that. We need to be able to support the current public protector in her role to be able to ensure this accountable and transparent uh, a government. Um, and how are we going to do this when the DA, uh, 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 you know, refuses to apologize yeah. for this gender discrimination? Final question to you, and it's a repeat question. Do you think that beyond Advocate Talega, the women of South Africa deserve an apology from the Democratic Alliance? Well, I would say yes. Because it's historic that we have always been accused, not through our abilities, not through our work, not what we have done, but we have slipped ourselves to the top. And I think that is unacceptable. Will this type of behavior, if she was a man and he slipped himself to the top, would they have indicated that? And Brighton Bach should know what the power relations are in relation to uh, sexual harassment, um, having uh, a relationship, for example, which speaks to power. What is she actually saying? And I think that she needs to go and reflect mm -hmm. in terms of what she has done for women in the legal profession, not just um, a colleague, but also broadly those that has the ability that that ensures that they are in positions of power and that we've done that because of our abilities. All right. Director at the Women's Legal Center, CM Samai, thank you very much uh, for your thoughts on this matter. And Ms. Breitenbach, if you are watching, we will welcome you to come talk to us about why those comments.